Hi guys, this is Jasmine Jones from Cherry Blossom Intimates and I'm really excited to welcome you to another episode of Behind the Pink Wall. Behind the Pink Wall is a web series that we created to have intimate conversations with women in an intimate space, which is inside of our boutique here at Cherry Blossom Intimates. We're located in Woodmore Town Center at 9201 Woodmore Center Drive, Suite 426. And today I have the absolute pleasure of sitting down with Vanessa George Hi. of Sir Aesthetica to talk to us about brows and about her history and about important things that we should know, a few secrets, tidbits, all of that great stuff. So you're definitely in for a treat. So, hi Vanessa, how are hi, you? Jasmine. I'm good, how are you? I am great. Um, I'm just so excited to have you here for you. our first real true event of the month of February. Nice. Yeah. nice. So here at the store, we're celebrating self-love okay. all month long. So it's more than just a man that you're getting sexy for. Yep. It's all about loving yourself and treating yourself well. So we're very excited to have you. Um, and one of the reasons we invited you on is because you're a brow expert. I am. Okay, so tell me all about that. I'm so curious. Is how did you get into brows and where are you from and why is this cool? Okay, all right. A well, lot of things. A lot of things. Okay, <laughs> let's see. So I'm actually from Alexandria, Virginia. Okay. Um, but I've moved a lot within the DMV area. Um, I'm currently living in DC, but my studio, Sarah Aesthetica, is actually in Bethesda. Okay. Um, how did I get into brows? So I remember in high school, I'm not sure if you remember, uh, but it was kind of trendy to pluck them super, super thin, and yeah. those are the people that are regretting it now, but I mm. never I never thought it was cute, ever. Okay. My brows were full, almost untouched. You know, I would just clean them up a little bit. I, was, I would even do weird things like put Vaseline on them to make them like lay perfectly in place. I was obsessed. Um, and I just always remember that being the first thing I look at on somebody's face. Mm. Um, I've just kind of always been into aesthetics um, and artistry in general. So I think, um, even before that, uh, so I think that was kind of my first, the first time I realized, oh, I have a thing for brows. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I love it. So you were one of the ones plucking. No. No, you weren't plucking. No, I left mine. I didn't like that trend. Smart. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. But you were Vaseline. I was Vaseline. <laughs> <laughs> I was. Okay. So tell me about what you do now. No more Vaseline. No more. Okay. No. What is your regular everyday like and your everyday customer? My everyday customer is your everyday woman, mm -hmm. um, which means everybody's different. I have a wide range of demographics. Um, I have as young as a 19-year-old who came and saw me, a college student, and then I recently had somebody who was in her mid-60s. Okay. Um, from all from all backgrounds. Okay. Some people come to me with full brows and want uh, just maybe some tweaks, maybe their arches aren't even, and that's something that can be um, achieved with microblading, and we can talk about that a little bit later. Um, and then some have absolutely nothing and okay. want a brow. Okay, yeah. so um, why did you decide to join us today at Cherry Blossom? Do you have a certain tie to breast cancer? I do, okay. I do. So, well, actually how I learned about you all is from an article from afro.com mm -hmm. that my cousin posted. And I realized that you guys were local and I read the article and then I immediately went to your website and I was so, so moved by your mission. I'm not exaggerating. I, I probably said it earlier, I said it again. I have chills right now because it's just so moving um, and also shocking that something like this hasn't been done before. So I immediately thought, oh my God, you know, Vanessa, what can you do to help support that mission? If you think about it, the beauty industry um, from afar is pretty um, superficial and that's not in line with who I am as a person. So I said, how can I contribute? And then I thought about how breast cancer patients and survivors alike lose their hair, but not just the hair on their head, the hair on their face. Um, so yeah, so I thought, let me try my hand, let me reach out, see if I can maybe do an event, maybe um, just have some sort of tie to these women and offer my services for free to, um, you know, one, one survivor that's, not this month, this event. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So what Vanessa's mentioning is that she's actually raffling off a pair of permanent brows to a breast cancer survivor today, which is an incredible gift that you're going to be able to give them. We see survivors every day who just walk into the store and burst into tears. They yeah. get so emotional um, seeing a store like this because they never thought it existed. Yep. So many of our survivors are typically known for going to medical supply stores to get bras for the rest wow. of their life. And we knew we wanted to change that and that it had to be something engaging and fun and loving and yes. warm. 
Yes. So when I read your email about <laughs> a, a collaboration, a partnership, a party, I was like, oh, absolutely, we have to yeah. do this. So I'm glad that you came to join us. Yeah, thank you for having me. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm feel very, very honored, so thank you. It's our pleasure. So tell me about um, the survivors that you know or who you know who's been impacted by breast cancer and a little bit about their journey. Okay. So as I mentioned, I've kind of moved around the DMV area quite a bit. Right. And I actually used to live right around the corner from here. I'm talking about five minutes max. Um, and I lived in the house of my aunt, which is my father's, my father's sister, uh, who unfortunately passed away uh, to breast cancer. Um, at the time, I was like an early teen, maybe 13, 14, and I knew what breast cancer was and I knew it was terrible, but I, I didn't really understand the implications of it. I didn't understand how many women um, and even some men are impacted by it um, and just the damage it does on not just the individual, but the family, extended family. Um, so, so yeah, so we lived in her house after she passed away. Uh, her funeral was at St. Joseph's, right around the corner. Um, so I just kind of felt like how, um, maybe fate a little bit? Mm. How did the universe align me to even see my cousin's post, reach out, get a response, and then now have the opportunity to partner with somebody that was actually literally so close to home. Mm. So. Wow, that's so powerful. Yeah. Um, it's just so interesting how so many women have such a direct connection with breast cancer, and I'm, my heart goes out for you. I'm so yeah. sorry for your loss, but I'm, I'm also so grateful that you're here today yes. to be able to bless women who have been impacted. Yes. Um, it's kind of like full circle, right? Yes, absolutely. The world has a way of working it out. Yep. Okay, so on to some fun stuff. Okay. What do women need to know about eyebrows? Let's say um, they have brows, they don't know how to take care of them. People like me, yep. who just kind of like grab a pencil in the morning and mm -hmm. do something, and we're like, that's good. Yeah, <laughs> and they look the great. Door. Oh, thanks, girl. <laughs> um, but tell us how to make our eyebrows look perfect every day. Okay, well, the one thing you have to remember is that, and you may have heard this before, but brows are sisters, not twins. Yes. Okay. Sisters, not twins. Yes. We got that. Okay. Um, and I say that because you can take a stamp of an eyebrow and put it, you know, put that stamp on one side and put that same exact eyebrow on the other side, and it's not going to look exactly the same because nobody's face is, is completely symmetrical. Right. So that's just one thing that you have to keep in mind. Don't be so hard on yourself. Uh, but there are certain places where your brow should start, arch, and end. Okay. Um, and just some like really easy tips and tricks if you take a pencil and you just kind of line it to your nostrils okay a, oh, on the outside of your nostrils that's where it should start okay um if you have a <laughs> wider set nose for example i need if i were to start my brow right here i might look kind of crazy so you take it to the inside of the nostril start okay. it right here okay. and that's where it should start about okay then you take a pencil and you go diagonal from the outside of your okay. nostril straight through the pupil that's about where it should arch and then take that same straight line to the end of your eye and that's about where it should end ah. yeah so if it, so it's all about my nose yeah ah so it's not about my eyes no ah no <laughs> been doing it all wrong guys yeah the <laughs> nose is like you can't really go wrong mm. so i typically here okay unless you have like a really really narrow nose and i'll say the outside of your nose but typically right here on the inner okay. part of your nostrils and here and then here she made it easy. <laughs> okay, um, what should we be using to fill our brows? Um, so it depends on the kind of brows you want, right? Some okay. people prefer a very made up look. So for that, I would recommend some sort of pomade um, or even eyeshadow oh. um, and just like a thin angled brush Okay. and do hair like strokes. If you are in there coloring like a crayon, you're gonna look like you colored oh with a crayon. Gosh, I color with a crayon. <laughs> So just, All right, it's okay. Now we know. Now right? you know. Okay. That's why I'm here. No coloring. No coloring. Just small strokes. I mean, unless that's what you want, right? Okay, that's not what I want. Okay, <laughs> just small strokes in like the the flow of where your natural hair flows. Okay. So that's here in the front, kind of upward, and then when you get to the arch, it's kind of uh, downwards a little bit, not completely down, but right, right. It's kind of slanted down. Okay. Then these hairs are slanted upwards, so then they meet at the tail. Or meet it down the spine. Right, yeah. and then how do I build a perfect tail? Because that's my issue. They taper off, yeah. right? Like they're fine, and then they kind of get a little, I got to fix them. Okay. So how does that work? How do I do a tail? Well, so like I said, just take the straight line, and I'll typically just take like an eyebrow pencil okay. and measure from the outside of your nostril diagonal to the end of your eye and just draw all the way up. That's where you know it should end. Oh. Uh, and, you know, then just pencil? And then just pencil it in. I mean, 
If you look really, really closely, you'll probably see little tiny hairs that you can follow. And it's just up to you on how you like the style. Some people prefer thinner brows, some right. people prefer thicker brows. Mm -hmm. um, and that's when it's on you to decide, you know, do you want thick, do you want super bold, do you want something mm. casual? Okay. Um, so yeah. So women can choose. Women can choose. Have the right to choose. Brows are not one size fits all at okay. all. And, and Actually, it's one of the things that I focus on as Sarah Stetica is really, really making sure that um, I take my time to map out my clients' brows and uh, combine what they want in terms of shape with kind of the guidelines of where they should be. Mm. Um, you know, there's often times where I'm thinking a thicker brow and they're thinking thinner or vice versa. They're thinking, you know, thicker and I'm thinking thinner. Mm -hmm. And it's my job to kind of say, all right, well, where's the happy medium? Okay. You know, I'm, and, and deliver that. Right. Yeah. Okay. Um, so tell me about the best candidates for permanent eyebrow and permanent makeup. Sure. And is it, first, is it actually permanent? And then who's the best candidate? Okay. So it's called permanent makeup um, or PMU for short. Um, it is a form of tattooing, which is something that I want to bring up um, for anybody who is um, out of it about not having tattoos. It is a form of tattooing, but it's different than a traditional tattoo in the sense that you're not going quite as deep in the skin, which is why it fades over time. Also the types of inks that are used, um, which are completely non-toxic, um, also fade, are designed to fade over time. Um, so while it's called permanent makeup, it's really semi-permanent. Mm. Uh, depending on the technique, after five years, let's say, maybe it'll be completely gone. I mean, it'll take its time to fade. Okay. Um, but yeah. I think that's a great starter point, you Absolutely. know, if you don't have brows or if they don't look how you want them yep. and you're ready for an option that could last you five years, yep. um, permanent makeup might be the way to go. Yeah. Okay. So permanent makeup doesn't, at least for eyebrows, doesn't typically last five years. Okay. Um, it'll last anywhere between one to two years before you're mm. going to need an annual touch up. Okay. Um, so yeah. That's some, really great. You can still see like the remnants of permanent makeup on some people after three and four years, but it's not typical. Mm. But you know what's interesting? Maybe that's for the best yeah. because our faces change, Absolutely. right? We lose and we gain weight. Yep. We go through different things in life. Yep. Um, we might be changing up our look. Yes. We might want to just change our brows too. Brow trends change. Yes. That too. So are the trends more thick now? Are they thinner now? What have you been seeing? So I've been seeing still with the thick okay. and a less manicured look. Mm. which has always been my favorite. It's always like, I woke up like this. I woke up like this for sure. Okay. Um, a little bit wispier. Okay. A little bit messy, but you know, full, thick, still fierce, you know? Mm, I love that. Yeah, me Okay. Too. Tell me some celebrities whose brows you love. Whose celebrity brows do I love? Um, so I recently posted a photo of Ashley Graham because she has some great brows. We love Ashley Graham. Yeah, I love her. She's curvy and just yes. I love her. Mm -hmm. uh, so I, I'm really digging her brows right now. Okay. Yeah. I okay. That's a good choice. Yeah. That's a good choice. I'm trying to think who's, you know, Kaya Gerber. She's like Cindy Crawford's daughter. Yeah, you have oh, to I'm see sure her. She has her brows, brows are like super fierce. Too. Oh, I'm sure. And thick. So I love it. She pulls them off. I love it. Yes, absolutely. So um, one more thing, I guess, before we get ready to go, is there anything that our customers and guests and women need to know about feeling confident and sexy and beautiful and loving on themselves um, through eyebrows? Yes, I mean, look, you have to embrace your individuality. Don't look at someone else's brows and say, oh, I wish my brows looked like that because mm -hmm. they're not, it's not your face and it's not for you. And in reality, somebody's probably looking at you wishing they had your brows too. Right. Um, so yeah, just embrace exactly what you have. It sounds cliche. I know we're in the self-love movement, but I truly, truly believe that. Yeah. Um, you know, comparison really is the, jo the, the, thief, the thief of joy, is that mm -hmm. thing. Mm -hmm. um, and I firmly believe that. So embrace your brows, even if they're sparse. If they're sparse, come see me. Yes. <laughs> um, and I can help for sure. Absolutely. Yeah. So tell us one more time, where are you located? How do we get in touch with you? What are all your social media handles? Okay. So uh, my studio is located in Bethesda, Maryland. Okay. Uh, 4500 East West Highway. I'm in Suite 123. Um, you can find me at www.aesthetica-mp.com. That's E-S-T-E-T-I-C-A dash M as in Mary, P as in Paul dot com. Um, you can go to my website. I have a ton of information there. You can book directly there. Um, you can always email, call, text. I'm always happy to answer questions. Uh, don't feel like you can't contact me with questions 
questions just because there's a lot of information on, on my website. Mm -hmm. If you have any concerns in terms of whether you are a candidate for permanent makeup, always ask. Anybody who is a breast cancer survivor, I just ask that you be in remission or out of chemo for at least six months. Okay. Um, and I bring that up because it's very important. As you know, chemo severely compromises your immune system. And while it's not likely, it's still possible to get an infection from these little teeny tiny incisions. Mm -hmm. And we want to avoid that at all costs. So I'm happy to see you, but I have to make sure you are out of the danger zone first. Right, yeah. right. And I guess that also ties to another point. We're not yet done. Yeah. What does it feel like? Okay. Get this. Okay. <laughs> okay. So it can be uncomfortable. Okay. And there are certain guidelines that you'll have to follow before um, and after you get the procedure done. Okay. A to help minimize bleeding, um, and then also minimize your discomfort and maximize your healing. Um, bleeding is normal, but when I say bleeding, it's very very minor. I'm talking about little dots of blood because you're taking a t tiny tiny blade and making little incisions into the skin. So you know that you're, there's gonna be some, some blood. Right. Um, I'll numb you for about 30 minutes beforehand, just using a topical, topical numbing cream, and that will really, really helps minimize discomfort. Once the skin is broken, I will then put a numbing gel on, once the, and that helps, um, you know, helps with the discomfort because your skin is now broken, so mm. your skin can better absorb the numbing agent. Um, and clients are typically comfortable after that. I just continue to numb you throughout the procedure. Um, you'll feel it a little bit, but it's not, it's nothing unbearable. Everybody who comes in nervous is like, oh, that's it? Mm. But the first few hair strokes that I do, everybody always says, did you do it? I'm like, yeah, I did. <laughs> You're like, can you start now? Yeah, I, true story, I had a lady, fall, this has never happened to me before, I had a lady fall asleep yesterday. I'm not exaggerating. That I wasn't expecting. Okay, Yeah. and about how long does a session last? Um, I tell my clients to book anywhere between two to two and a half to three hours of their day. Um, like I said, I spend the first 30 minutes numbing, and then after that, I spend a good 15 minutes mapping it out and getting your okay for the shape. And then I like to take my time. And then we'll go out through the aftercare instructions. Wow, fabulous. Yeah. Well, thank you very much, Vanessa George, for joining us today. Thank you, Jasmine. Guys, this has been Sir Aesthetica joining us for brows and bra fittings right here at Cherry Blossom Intimates. We're actually filming live during the event. We have bra fittings going on, and we have some women who are ready to talk to you about brows. I love it. So I'll right. let you go. Okay. All right. Thank you guys for joining us here at Behind the Pink Wall. We'll catch you on the next episode right here at cherryblossomintimates.com.